we're continuing with line 50, Salway, going to line 56, and we will finish this uh, section of the text. We finished his speech, and now we're going to describe the action that he takes, that Leoka'un takes against the horse. Sic fatus validis ingentem viribus astam in latus inque feri curvam compagibus album contorsit. Do that part first. So having spoken, this is a perfect participle, and it's passive, but not really its deponent, because it comes from for fari, and that means to speak, and its deponent, so passive form, but translated active. So having spoken, thus having spoken, and this is referring to his speech that he just made, he contorts it, you got to go way down here for the verb, he hurled, he torqued, you know, he twisted, he hurled the ingentem hastam, the huge spear, validis viribus, with a very strong, valiant strength. Okay, now you might say, oh, I thought that was the word weary, men. It's This is not weir. This comes from wis, which means force violence, and we've seen it we superum in the very beginning of the poem. Wiribus uh, is ablative plural. With great strength. It tells us the manner that he hurled this huge spear. And you might notice this is a nice uh, synchesis interlocking order here. A, B, A, B. Ablative, accusative, ablative, accusative. So, thus having spoken, he hurled the huge spear with valiant strength into the latus, the side, and into the belly of the beast curved with joints. Compagibus. I believe we used this before when he was talking about the joints of the ships, where the seams, where the wood is nailed next to each other. So let's do this. Into the belly and then curved goes with belly, but you got a couple other words that go along here. You should do it in the right order. Uh, the belly of the beast, I would put, put that genitive after belly. I think it sounds best. And then it's curved, and how was it curved? Compagibus, with side, with the, sorry, seams. So that's an ablative that goes with curved, tells us how it was curved. One more time. So having spoken, he hurled his huge spear with great strength into the side and into the belly of the beast curved with its joints. Stetit illa tremens uteroque recuso insonuere cawa gimitumque deidere cawernae. It, that thing, that's the subject, illa, referring to the hastam. You can see that the illa is feminine. And hastam is feminine, so it refers to that with subject change. It stetit stood there, tremens, trembling. So imagine the spear goes into the side of the horse, boing, and then it's trembling there. Those are supposed to be lines looking like it's moving. It the, it stood there trembling, and utero recuso. This is ablative absolute with the belly uh, shaken, with the belly shaken, with the uterus shaken. Imagine this thing is pregnant with Greeks, right? So utero is a very appropriate word. Insonuere. This is a plural verb. It's really insonuerunt, what we call an apocopated form. The end has been cut off. And what was it that in Sonuere that sounded the kawai, kawernai, the hollow, literally caverns or hollows, the kawai kawernai, both very similar words, and it has a nice effect. The hollow caverns in Sonuere sounded 
and dederunt, this is dedere, really dederunt, just like insunuere is insunuerunt, and gave a gemitun, and gave a groan. Very ominous. It's obviously hollow, and something could be in there. Gave a groan. It stood there, trembling, and with the belly or uterus having been shaken, the hollow caverns sounded, and they gave a groan. Et si fata deum, si mens non laiwa fuisset, impulerat fiera Greek argolicas foidere la tebras, troiaque nunc staret priam quark salta maneris. And then he has this little reflection. And this, remember, this is Aeneas saying all this, because he was watching it. Not Laocon speak anymore, but Aeneas narrating all this. And if the fates deum, this is really deorum, syncopated form, deorum of the gods. And then we have some anaphora here. Si mains no laiwa fuiset. Si, si. If the fates of the gods... And you got to put this, had not been laiwa, had not been unlucky. Laiwa literally means left, as in the left hand, but also that can be unlucky. Had not, the fates is the, so the subject. Had not been laiwa, that goes with that. Fuiset, from sum, essay fui. This is what we call a pluperfect subjunctive. Fuiset, if the fates of the gods had not been unlucky, there's the not, if the mind had not been unlucky, impulerat, now this is Leokon is the subject of this, he, meaning Leokon, he would have driven us to foidare, to defile, to basically cut up with their swords, to defile the Argolicas Latebras, the Argive hiding places, or another way of saying the Greek hiding places. He would have caused us to go in there and find those Greeks and slaughter them. And how would we have done it? Ferro, with the iron, meaning with the sword. Troiaque nunc staret, priami quarxalta maneres. So, and if the fates of the gods had not been unlucky, if the mind had not been foolish, maybe we could say, he would have impelled us to defile the Greek hiding places with the sword. And Troy would now stand. Troy ya nunc staret. Troy would now stand. This is the moment when we lost Troy. And the... And you got to put in a tu here, because maneres, the subject, is tu, you. And you, arx alta, vocatives here. And you, high citadel of Priam, genitive. What is the high citadel of Priam? Another way of saying Troy. Maneres, you would remain. What's going on? He's talking to Troy. That's right, he's talking to Troy because he's so moved by emotion. This is what we call apostrophe, addressing someone or something that's not there. So it's a nice way to end this section right here, talking about how Leokun tried to stop him. He's going to mention more about Leokun, but, but this is a nice dramatic way to close us off here. And you, High Citadel of Priam, would remain. Wale. Vale.